Jamie's got himself five fish. He was anxious to get up here, and I see why. All right. Where I live in northwestern Ontario is like the mystery Alaska of bass fishing. Our tournament season's from July 1st to early October, over half the year is under frozen sheet ice. The passion for bass fishing here is unlike any place I've ever experienced. We're just in a remote area of northwestern Ontario. We have no formal tournament circuit up here. Instead, the small communities along Lake of the Woods and surrounding areas have huge volunteer-driven open team bass tournaments. These tournaments have massive crowds and hype and draw up to 300 anglers in a single event. The fierce competition in these tournaments breeds success and raises the bar of what an angler has to be to compete. Unlike many other areas, there's no standouts in these events. The finishes are always close. There's not a single angler that can just show up and win. If you want to win a tournament up here, you have to beat the founders of the Marabou Hair Jig, the pioneers of vertical bass fishing, an elite series champion, and the hungriest locals you'll ever meet. The past season, I found more success in tournaments here than ever before. I wanted to keep everything rolling and try to size up to the field down south. The Bassmaster Opens field is comprised of the top bass anglers on earth, and up and comers in the sport. I figured this may be the only chance I get to take a swing at some of the best in the game, so I went for it. Here's the journey. that was a little bit on the serious side for a dude talking about uh fishing derbies but i really do feel like we have a special place up here uh you know a lot of people from this area don't realize how how good we have it uh you know to have the fisheries and the tournaments that we do i mean there's really no reason with the population around here and how remote we are um there's no reason anybody from here should ever be mentioned in a U.S. bass tournament, um, you know, but here we are, we've got Gussie on the elites, um, you know, not just surviving, but he's standing out. Uh, we've had three or four teams just from the Kenora, Fort Francis, Dryden area alone win the Sturgeon Bay Open Bass Tournament, which is like the biggest open team bass tournament in the central U.S., um, we've got guys like Ted Stooner down on, on Lake Havasu winning a tournament every weekend. There's, like I said, there's just no reason that all of this should be happening from a, an area like this, but obviously people up here love it. We've got the best volunteers on earth, like the directors and volunteers in these tournaments. I mean, they're, they're spending their own time to give us, you know, like a Super Bowl style uh, big crowds and, and everything and you know just wanted to highlight it there's a lot of good anglers up here and very few of them get the chance to to venture down south uh, you know logistic wise and and everything like that but anyway uh, obviously we're here uh, doing a bit of a wrap up of the Bassmaster Southern Open on Cherokee Lake. First spot on Cherokee first stop 16 and a half incher minnow eater. So earlier in the year, I, I tried to sign up for all three uh, Bassmaster Southern Opens. Um, missed the boat on registration. You know, I was there first thing and, and everything was ready. And uh, my Canadian credit card company saw that there was a, a big charge for my deposits from Alabama. And they were all proud that they put a hold on my credit card. And I ended up not getting into the Opens. I was 48th on the waiting list. Uh, so I didn't get into Florida and I ended up getting a call just two weeks before the tournament for this Cherokee Lake one. So uh, you have to fish all three tournaments to qualify for the Bassmaster Classic or the Bassmaster Elite Series. So I knew that, you know, those were both off the table, you know, until next year, hopefully. Um, but, you know, wanted to go down anyway and just kind of size up against everyone and yeah, whatever, a, a good vacation, if nothing less. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go crazy on like the road trip, YouTube in and everything like that. You know, not to mention I'm a Canadian 24 hours from home wearing a beaver hat, 
in an aluminum boat, I don't need to add in talking to a GoPro to, to the resume down there either. So, uh, you know, I had it rolling and I'll just kind of take you through the experience. Um, I really didn't think there'd be that many people up here that would care, but uh, my phone was blowing up like crazy. So I'll we'll slap a, a video together here and, uh, you know, let, let you know what it was all about. So these Bassmaster Opens, if you don't know, are massive fields, 225 boats. Um, they've got a bunch of Bassmaster Elite Series anglers, probably 30% of the elites fish, you know, some of the Opens. A um, bunch of up-and-comers, FLW, Tapa Warehouse, Circuit people, uh, even some MLF, BPT guys trying to get in. Uh, you know, then a bunch of up and comers um, and just whoever is hungry enough to want it. So, um, you know, for someone down there, it's not, it's not such a monumental thing to go fish. You just pay, you know, it's a pretty big entry fee. It's like 1800 bucks, uh, you know, pay that, drive a couple hours and fish a derb and you're good. But, you know, for someone up here, it's, it's a lot bigger of a deal. So uh, a lot of people got behind me and, and, you know, it was, it was a cool thing. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I drove, it took about 23 hours to get down there. Uh, I buzzed down solo uh, and uh, you know, got there the first night. And I haven't been to this lake before, I haven't been to this area before. All I knew about it was what I could kind of find on the internet and you know, TV and whatever else. So I looked at a bunch of the lake charts, I looked at Google Earth and, and did a bunch of stuff like that and I had a pretty good idea where I wanted to start. So I got there at like five o'clock that first night after, um, you know, pretty much just driving through the night, you know, splashed the Lund and got right to it. I, the first spot I went to, I caught a keeper out deep, you know, I was throwing up shallow and I looked at my graph and saw one. I was like, oh, I had talked to a buddy on the way down. He said there were lots of white bass or stripers or whatever they are. So I figured it was one of those dropped down, caught a small mouth. I'm like, okay, uh, cool. Fish shallow for a while, caught one little one. And then right at the end of the night, right at dark, I uh, tried one more deep spot and I, they, you know, they were loaded. I was like, okay, there's something to this deep deal. Uh, it was super cold out at the time. I knew it would probably fade, but uh, you know, whatever. It was something cool. It was a way I was comfortable with catching them. I figured I'd be fishing up shallow, but uh, just didn't end up being the case. So I, you know, I figured I'd run with the deep ones for a bit. Um, I'm not going to beat like Brandon Lester throwing a spinner bait um, on the bank. So figured I'd just, you know, play my strengths and stay out, stare at my graphs. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, that second day I went out there and just smashed them. It was unreal. It was super cold, super windy. Um, I just took that smeltinator jig and went to work on them. It was, it was pretty awesome. Probably had... I, you know, I didn't have my GoPro on all day just for a little bit, but I probably had like 18 or 19 pounds without leaning on them. Um, so, but when you first get to a lake, it's easy to break down the deep spots because I was just fishing all the obvious ones and they were good. And there are a lot of boats out there doing it too, but whatever. Um, I was happy with how it was looking. Oh, good. There were fish other than smallmouth in here. Is that a spot? You should probably learn. I gotta cut you off here just to do the comment, subscribe, like thing. Gotta get that algorithm tripped. Uh, you know, the more more love you get in the comments and, and the subscriptions and all that. Everything just snowballs, uh, helps with the sponsors and everything, and is pretty much the only way I'm gonna have a chance at getting back down there. Um, so I uh, appreciate all the support, um, and you know, something as small as subscribing, it only takes a minute, or liking takes about zero seconds, even dislike it if you don't like it, that's fine, any love's good. Um, so yeah, thanks, we'll get back to her here. So that first night I got back to the boat ramp that had like a hundred, hundred trucks at it, uh, earlier that morning. And, uh, you know, I had known to, you, you're fishing till dark every day of pre-fish. I only had four and a half days. So, uh, some of these guys are down there for 
two weeks and just let her fly. Uh, obviously didn't have that luxury. Um, so I had to cram as much as I could in uh, daylight to dark for four days. Um, so anyway, I get back to the ramp at dark and the only trucks that were left um, were one of the guys I was staying with, Brad Leitner, and uh, all every other truck in the parking lot was in the Elite Series. There were four or five other trucks. So I was like, okay, that's the recipe there. Like, so, I mean, seeing all those elite trucks there at, at dark kind of like solidified the, you know, the thought that obviously these guys just work harder than everyone else. And um, that's probably a big part of it. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I put the old Lund on shore, uh, dropped my Raptors down. And as you can see in the video, it was a hurricane that day. It was like 40 or 50 K winds, whatever that is in miles an hour. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I put the poles down. The water was so low on the lake, there was no docks or anything. Uh, I went and got the truck, and when I came back, my boat was just chooching down the river. Um, <laughs> so I saw, I could see the glow of a cigarette, um, and there's a guy yelling at me. He's like, I'll give you a ride, Bubba. I was like, okay. So he gets closer, and it, it was Brian New, um, who's a super hammer. He's won some elite derbies, and he's on fire right now. Um, so anyway, he tried to get close to where I was, couldn't, it was so windy. So he's like, all right, bub, go, I'll pick you up on the beach. So I went over, ran through this red clay. I was like, ah, she's all over my kicks. I'm like, oh no, like this guy's going to save me. I gotta, I gotta, you know, clean my, uh, clean my shoes off. I'm not going to dirty up his boat. So I stuck my shoes in the lake and jumped on the deck of his boat and the water had like activated the red, red clay down there. And it was just like a dump pudding all over his boat. So we got over to my rig. It was chooching towards the bridge. And yeah, he, he saved me big time. But I totally destroyed his boat in return. So that was my first full day down there. A little bit embarrassing. But uh, what was I talking about? tell you grinding these new lakes is tough um, we are so spoiled at home and I I know that thankfully I've been down and fished in the US quite a bit so I know I'm not just gonna expect to wheel up on every shoreline and catch 52 pounders like you can on Lake of the Woods um, but I just went a full five hours without a bite and found a boulder that had uh, you know, a bunch of them on it, right by takeoff here. So that's just part of it. A um, lot of work. I'm I'm getting a couple little digits a day. I'm fishing out deep. I really sucked it up on the bank. I've caught like two off the bank the whole whole practice so far, and I'm just gonna keep staying out deep, but. It's going to get warmer by the day. I know it's going to be a dying program, but there's 200 boats on the shoreline, so we're both on dying programs. We'll, we'll see who wins. There's about an hour left in practice. They're loaded. So finished up practice. Um, it was, uh, it was not easy. Uh, I split my time 60, 40 between deep and shallow. Uh, could really only get onto them out deep. Uh, there was a lot of boats out there doing it. So I spent a lot of time looking for sneaky spots. Um, lots of sharp breaks. Uh, 
lots of spots that you really had to fish to find none that you would find on your graph i just had to get up there guys are making fun of my butt seat but i was up there ripping all day i've got canbat lithium batteries so i can just go on 10 and go the whole day and if i see something good i put my smeltinator and uh jerk shads in front of it and if something comes up great if not keep going um run run tons of water in a day and it's almost like deep power fishing um but i was only finding like two or three dots a day and you don't know how good they are um you know I, I could drop my marking camera once in a while and and verify that they were bass but you can't really tell the size and and i was mostly just catching one and and beating it so i didn't really know what i was on and when i'd go up shallow i would just suck i you know, you'd go a mile and catch like a couple two pounders or whatever it was, and you'd pass six other boats and it just wasn't up my alley. So, um, it was, uh, that yeah, was interesting. Uh, the day before the tournament, I actually didn't catch a bass or mark one. You're only allowed to fish till noon that day. Um, so <laughs> it was getting hot and I was getting a little bit freaked out, but, uh, there was a big wind in the forecast. I figured I'd be okay offshore. Um, uh, I I'm used to fishing in the wind. Uh, my best practice day was in that super wind, so I was fine with it. And then this happened. Mega Ripper ended up coming through. Uh, so that night before um, what was supposed to be the first day of the tournament, uh, there was a, the wind was rocking pretty good. I mean, she was gassing and we were, the layout we were in was pretty much a, an Airbnb. Oh, it was, I mean, mostly in a trailer park. Um, well, it wasn't a trailer park, but every house was a trailer except for the house we were in and it didn't really have a basement on it anyway. So, you know. That's when Brad kind of highlighted that, you know, we're in a place where hurricanes and tornadoes hit and we're in a place with no basement. So it got a little bit real there for a bit, but whatever, uh, it, it passed us luckily and, you know, everything was all good, but they still had to cancel the derb, any small craft advisory, you know, it, we probably had double the wins that were allowable for the tournament. So, um, I mean, I was pissed. I, I didn't sleep much the night before. Um, I was I was itching to get out there and I was revved up when I got that text in the morning. I was, you know, dump my coffee out and go pout in the room. But uh, whatever, I, I said I was going to go to Douglas Lake, which the Opens have been going there every other year kind of thing. And uh, I went uh, for breakfast with Brad and Matt Robertson uh, beforehand, and which was pretty awesome. That's like meeting the all American hero. Um, so I, yeah, I walked out of there and like the wind was ready to tear off the roof of the hotel beside us. So, uh, it was a good call that they canceled it. I wouldn't have been able to catch bass offshore in that. So, um, you know, everyone is safe and whatever we got, got to calm down a little bit. Um, just hung out that day and, you know, re-rigged a few things, settled the nerves a little and got back at her on the Friday. Well, we made her to day one of the Bassmaster Southern Open on Cherokee. Uh, yesterday was a wind day, it was canceled. It was blowing over 50 miles an hour. It was pretty nuts. Um, just at the ramp now, it's insane how many boats are in this thing. 225 boats, 200 and some co-anglers. Uh, I gotta pick up my co-angler here. They fish their own tournament. They catch their own three fish. Um, and they just draw each day and put a co-angler with a pro. Um, I've never had a co-angler before. We'll see how that goes. Uh, kind of ready to go. I know my program's a sinking ship, but I hope I have enough dots out there to uh, to make it work. We, we did lose yesterday, so it was one more day that the fish had to move shallow. It had been warm, so there's a good chance a lot of those fish are gone, which is fine. Uh, I'm prepared for that, and I'm going to run all my deep stuff, and hopefully catch a big bag and survive out there. Uh, but if not, I'm not gonna be totally oblivious to the shallows. Um, you know, 
I didn't catch them very good at all shallow in practice. I spent a lot of my time out deep, but if they're gone from the depths, they're going to be up on the bank. So it should be a lot better than it, than it was. And, um, I focused a lot of my attention on finding deep spots that were close to somewhere that was going to pull up. Uh, we all knew it was going to get warm like this. So, uh, it's, it's all part of the plan and hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. This takeoff process is pretty intimidating. Um, there's a lot of rules and different regs that I'm not used to. There's 225 boats, so it's pretty wild. I wish I would have fished like a, a BFL or something instead of hopping right in as a pro, but whatever, it's sink or swim, I guess. We'll see you out there. One thirty one, Kyle Monty. I think he might be on a line too. One thirty two, Aaron Dye, straight ahead. Last boat, point twelve, four fifty check in, one thirty three, Jamie Bruce. That first morning, um, you know, the wind was still ripping pretty good. It was super cold. The water temp was cold. Everything was looking good. Um, so I, I told my co-angler I, I had found a spot close to the ramp where I thought I could catch a quick like 12 to 13 pounds and you know just breathe a little bit and then ease my way up the lake and I'm gonna be all good. You know, this was probably the best number spot I found. It was right by the takeoff, whatever. I pulled up there and didn't mark a fish. Um, took a cast shallow and had it like a, a sharp strike on my minnow. Um, but yeah, pretty disappointing. Then I just kind of fished spots up the lake, not wanting to run around a bunch. Zero, 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 zero. Like striking out pretty hard. Uh, Notice the water was muddy and cold in the areas I was in and cold, muddy water usually is no good for anyone. Um, but anyway, I got up the lake a little bit further, um, went to a point that I had just caught some fish on, not big ones or anything. And I was fishing out deep. I'll finally get smoked. Yeah, it's on, big one. Uh, and I hear my co-angler, oh, I got one too. I was like, okay, it's game on. No, I got a striper. I'm like, oh, you probably got a striper too. They school up like crazy. So I'm fighting this striper that's pretty much a cross between a lake trout and a smallmouth bass. And as I'm fighting it, I look back and my co-angler doesn't have a striper. He gets like a three pound smallmouth uh, on a crankbait. He had made a cast just long enough to get to shore and caught it off the bank. And I was like, oh my God, they all move shallow. I'm screwed. Um, so whatever I said, I'd adapt. Ran up the bank, shallow a little bit, didn't get anything more. I was like, okay, well, we gotta keep running deep. That's all I have for now. I have to burn that down. And, uh, you know, finally got to the next deep spot, caught a couple, started to breathe, hopped around, settled into a rhythm and just had a, had a good day. We ain't gonna zero, bud. <laughs> I can't tell you the relief that is. I know. Oh yeah, I saw you. Stay down, girly. He's got her good. Woo! Him. 
you know, I, I was catching them pretty good and just cut, I wasn't weighing them or looking too close. You know, by the time I finally got around to weighing them, I had like 14 or 15 pounds. I was like, okay, these are, you know, they're bigger than I thought. Um, I did feel bad. I was hanging a five inch Z-Man uh, jerk shad for the most part on the 3.8 Smeltonator 3 uh jig head, like the classic. Um, probably my number one money winner up here. Um, so, you know, he didn't have any, he was asking like, what, you know, what kind of jig is that? He didn't ask for any baits. I really wanted to give him some. I've just heard so many horror stories of, you know, from Gussie and other buddies of, you know, giving your co-angler a bait and then, then stroking a big one off your spot and, and it ends up hurting you. So as nice as he was, as much as I wanted to give him a bait, I, uh, I didn't until the end of the day. And you know, I, sidebar, I talked to him the next day and he had caught them all on the smeltinator head. It's just a really refined jig head for this technique. People up here catch thousands of bass a year on it. Um, we're down there, it's, it's not as popular. So we've just been able to really fine tune everything and just know these little subtle differences. Uh, you know, with something as simple as a jig head, uh, they make a big difference. So the tournament actually ended up being won on it. Um, but anyway. Uh, Day one went well. I caught some big ones off camera. Amy Bruce, come on up. Amy's got himself five fish. He was anxious to get up here, and I see why. All right. He's all the way from Ontario, Canada. He's 18.6 to take the lead. Going to fall a little bit shy of that, but I say 18 pounds and two ounces is a solid day on Cherokee Lake. 18.2 has him four ounces out of the lead right now. Awesome. All right, stick them down in there. Just leave them right there. Just leave it the whole bag. Come on, talk to me. You want to say something? Yeah, they told me I had to catch a big bag if I wanted to grab the mic today. I just want to say hi to all my friends and family back in Canada. Um, trying to do this one more day. I love this state. Uh, I love this lake, and I want to win it so I can extend the vacation another week down here. So thanks, everyone. Great job. Great start. Congratulations. Give him a big round of applause. Comes all the way down from Ontario, Canada, Jamie Bruce. Day two at the ramp. Yesterday went well. Um, sitting in fourth place out of 225 boats. Kind of surreal. Uh, but we got a derb to win nonetheless. You know, I'm not going to sit here and get all fired up on a one day or it's uh, going to be a two day tournament. And uh, yeah, I'm hunting 18 again. It didn't come easy yesterday. It was, it was scratchy. Never caught a fish for the first hour and a half uh abandoned kind of the mega deep stuff and and i only had a little bit of the shallow stuff so i fished some new water and tried to find you know some more places to catch them and i i ended up finding one more spot where i caught a couple three and a half so i'm hoping that reloads enough i didn't back off it but i didn't sit there and wail on it all day and heat it out either so this is yeah this has just been awesome um I mean, I got Drew Cuck right in front of me launching. Like, it takes a lot to get over who you're fishing against. I mean, that guy just won the Elite Series event last weekend on Sandy Cooper with like 100 pounds of bass. So, uh, one more day, I want that trophy. Uh, you know, a good finish is great, but you don't get a chance to win often, especially in a field this size of some of the best anglers there are. There's two Bassmaster Elite Series anglers of the year in the field. Um, there's a Forestwood Cup winner. There's a bunch of Elite Series winners. It's it's pretty wild. I'm probably not going to get another chance anytime soon to lay a beating on these guys. Um, so I may as well take it while I can. Listen to a lot of pump up tunes on the way here. We're ready to go. All right, I got you, Harvey. Sorry. Yeah. 450. He's way out there. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Thank you. There you go, bud. Keep there.
that next day I had ran a few of the zones that I had found them on the first day. One of them was actually a new spot where I caught them pretty good. Um, it was really bait driven by the wind. Uh, the bait was blowing these th thread fin shad up and blowing them into the deep, um, like underwater ledges. And I was catching them all along there. And I actually, I didn't back off them, but I didn't stay and catch all of them. So uh, I figured I'd have something to run quick the next morning. Went there, just caught a couple, and then I scrambled around a lot. Um, they weren't on anything else that they were the day before, which is pretty standard for deep pass, you know, whether they've been fleeced or moved shallow or just moved on to the next deep structure or whatever. So uh, just a lot of downtime in between, but that's when you're fishing like this, you're only looking for a few short bursts a day. So I ended up hitting a couple of them, uh, you know, and I, I probably hit three good bursts in a eight or nine hour day, which is all you need. So. Keep your Punk. Caught him fly fishing. Look at the size of that crappie, dude. What? Just really was absent that big four and a half bite like I had on the first day. Um, which, you know, it's not a not a good feeling, but I uh, fished to the end and and whatever. It uh, is what it is. And actually my biggest fish that day, um, was it was like a, maybe it was a three and a half pounder or something. Uh, so I lied a little bit about the biggest being a three and a quarter, but uh, I caught it pretty late in the day and my co-angler had a ton of rods with them. He had like 15 or 20 rods. Um, and I, you know, we had the talk earlier in the day, like, you know, this is the runway. This is where I'm going to land him because he can't use nets and yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you know how it goes, you're fishing, your rods start spreading out. Um, so anyway, I hooked this thing. I'm walking, I'm not boat flipping it. So I'm walking down to go land it. And all these like, oh, they're probably like $1,500 combos were in the way. And <laughs> I had a big bass jumping on the other side of the boat. So, so I was just like a panda on a bamboo hammock, rolling all over these super expensive fishing rods, you know, just dump bearing over them and uh, buffaloed over to the bass and grabbed it. And I could just see him cringing. So sorry about that, bud, but you knew the rules of the game uh, if you're watching this. But yeah, had had super good luck on on my co-anglers both days. Like I know I've heard a lot of nightmare stories. I've been a co-angler before uh, in FLW with Gussie, you know, back in the day, I'd go travel with them to a couple of these. I went to two and uh, you know, I've heard a lot of stories and seen a lot of things. Um, and I didn't have any of that happen to me. I was the, I was the assailant in this case, rolling on that poor guy's rods, but yeah, worked out good there. Thanks boys. Yeah, I pulled her into the bay at the end of the day, and uh, as I was pulling in, I heard a hey! And I looked over, and uh, Gussie was there sitting in Gerald Swindle's boat. Uh, I was like, oh, sweet. He was down at Chickamauga. It's like three hours away. I had to practice the next morning. Came for a ride to come, you know, watch the weigh-ins. Well, glad to have him there. Uh, it was super cool. Um, I, I, Brian knew weighed in before me, so, so I knew I, had, I didn't win. Um, but I saw my buddy Cooper Gallant and, uh, you know, I had been talking to him all practice. Uh, he's a buddy, he's a hammer, he's super hardcore, um, was like sleeping in a tent in the dirt and minus four, uh, weeks before the tournament. Um, you know, he was down there early and wanted it bad and, uh, yeah, it worked out for him. He, he was my pick to win after the first day, just after seeing what was going on, I ran into him on, on a few of the same spots and you know 
he was doing the same thing I was and uh, he just had a little bit more of it um, or a lot more of it. But anyway, it was awesome to see him win. Um, so we were the only two Canadians in the whole field and we we're first and third. Uh, you know, we had Brian New sandwiched in between us, uh, which is fine. I did destroy his boat with clay. He made his way to the Bassmaster Classic, punched his ticket. He's probably going to make the Elite Series this year. I would be betting on it. Um, so, yeah, all good. It was awesome to have Gussie there. Um, just a, a good first experience um, down south. Obviously, they're not all going to go like that. I'm not naive into thinking I can just wheel down there and big dog it on these guys. It just happened to work out that I could fish, you know, one of my, what I would consider a strength um, and just kind of had the, the upper hand on on the, the small mall thing. So I'm sure the next one will be a little bit different. I'm going to try to to get into all three next year. Um, you know, if I can figure out the logistics and everything, it's a, it's a big commitment. Uh, it's a big chunk of change, especially when you're coming from Canada, but uh, it's a pretty good feeling being down there and I'd like to take another shake at it. So hopefully this wasn't too painful. I know there's a lot of talking and not a lot of like good B-roll or anything, but um, yeah, thanks for watching, like, sub, all that stuff. Take her easy.